and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance, then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV, where we have a very special guest here in the studio this morning. And of course, that is, if you don't know, I don't know how you wouldn't, but our Jackson City School Superintendent, uh, Phil Howard. And um, it's always fun to have all of you come in, like talk about, you know, what's going on in the school districts. And we've had, I think, our friends from Wellston and Oak Hill here recently. And so, um, asked Phil to come in and kind of give an update as we're, can you believe it, rounding out another school year? It's hard to believe. I mean, time really, really flies by. And I, you know, I got a daughter that's a, a freshman up at Ohio State. And, yes. and she's got a couple of weeks of school left and she's going to have that, that first year in. So yes. uh, it goes by so quickly. It does. Well, thank you. I know that you are very, very busy and there's so much stuff going on at the schools, especially toward the end of the year. But um, so you took time to come chat with us today and tell us a little bit about some of the things that are that are getting ready to happen. I know there was a school board meeting last night. So if anything kind of came of that, you could fill us in on that, too. Um, but, yeah. So what's going on, you know, toward the end of the year? There's just so much. Well, you uh, you brought up the board meeting last night. Last yeah. night was was a big board meeting for us. Uh, we had several uh Pretty important things that happened last night. We actually hired a new varsity girls basketball coach, uh, Matt Walburn, stepped down. Matthew. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's done it for he a He has years. done it he's for a while, okay. so we'll, you know. Yeah, we'll let him go. We'll give him a pass on that. But uh, we ended up hiring um, Chad Carpenter, who's been okay. who's been an assistant coach <laughs> un that under, makes sense. under Matt for the last few years. <laughs> knows the program, knows the kids. I uh, think he'll do a, a fantastic job for us. So, Last night, uh, the board hired him. Uh, we also last night hired six new teachers for this upcoming school year. Uh, Very cool. Kind of a mix. We have some young kids who are just graduating here in the next uh, month or so. And then, and we also hired, uh, we had a couple of uh, people that we stole from other districts, of course. So we had six, six <laughs> Teacher new <wars>. teachers. <laughs> yeah, six new teachers. Uh, we like to try to hire our people as early as we can because obviously when you hire early, uh, you get the cream of the crop. You get the opportunity to to pick the best people, and so I felt like that we did a great job last night in selecting those people. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Plus, they they have the opportunity to have you know until you know the whole summer to plan and all of that stuff. Well, and you know, I don't know how other districts do it. Uh, you know, I've been in a couple of other districts, but the way we do it here is you know, we really rely heavily on our building principals because they're the people that have to work with those people. Sure. And, you know, we hold, we like to hold our building principals accountable for what's taking place in their building. And the best way to do that is to give those people the leeway to be able to work with the people that they want, as opposed to, you know, me saying, here's your new teachers. You know, I think it makes it easier for those principals yeah. to help those people if they had a part in the in the selection process so absolutely um, how how do you hire a new teacher my goodness are there background checks are there interviews like I mean because it has to be a good fit as you just said for that particular location yeah I mean first of all you you want to look at the you know the licensure that the the person currently holds or that they're going to be holding when, when they're finished. And every teacher that we hire, uh, for example, last night we hired a few people who haven't actually graduated yet. They'll graduate in okay. April, April or May. And we always hire those people pending completion of the state and, and local requirements. So if someone would happen to, you know, not 
finish and then they don't have a job and and we sure. go back and we go back to the drawing board okay. um but you know our principals run all those interviews and usually they'll probably have a couple of rounds depending on how many people they have you know we may start off with a big stack of applicants and and they'll narrow it down to i think we interviewed 15 people for six positions okay um and they'll bring people back in for a second round and so forth and they give those names to me i meet with those people and very rarely do i you know probably honestly maybe three times in the last however long i've been superintendent I've, we won't say yeah i've lost track here <laughs> that's I, a whole other topic for a moment yeah I, I i don't like to say i'm old i'm seasoned or better or he's experienced <laughs> right experienced, yeah <laughs> and then so i will uh present names to the board of education and then the board will will vote on on those names so okay. it's it's a fairly lengthy process uh it takes a lot of time for our uh, principals to do the background checks and you know make phone calls and check references but in a lot of cases a lot of the people have actually worked for us because they've been substitute teaching in our district, or maybe they've uh -huh. done their maybe they've done their student teaching, and so we've had a chance to basically they've had an audition here. Yeah. Sure, yeah, so, that makes sense. You know, I had somebody ask me the other day, said, so, you know, does it does it help you? You know, if if people have done their um, done some work in your district, and I said, well, it's a double edged sword. If if you've substitute taught for us and you've done a great job. We know that. And so obviously that's going to give you a leg up. Sure. If you've substitute taught for us and you haven't done such a great job, we know that. <laughs> and exactly. So, and so uh, it can be a, it can be a, a double edged sword. So, um, but obviously, you know, those principals, you know, they want the best people that they can get for their buildings because they're, they're held accountable for what takes place yes, in these buildings. So uh, I, I think that the process that we use is, is really pretty good. Uh, you know, our board doesn't micromanage and, and get into the, I mean, one board member or maybe two last night made a comment that, well, you sure don't want me picking, you know, teachers because I don't know the first thing about what, you know, what makes a good teacher, but these people do, you know, our principals do because they're professional educators. And so well, and they've been there and done that. They've been there, and done that. And so our board allows those people to do their jobs and be able to pick the people that we want. And then unless, you know, I guess it's possible that a board member may know something about a candidate. And if that's the case, you know, they would get in, in contact with me before and say, Hey, Phil, have you checked this out? You know, we've heard this or that. And, yeah. And, uh, and then I would do my due diligence Small at that town, point. Small town, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so, you know, it was good to get those uh, teachers hired. I think we only need right. one more for next year. Now, okay. we'll probably have, as we always do, sometime during the summer, there'll be somebody who, you know, will want to go back home, wherever that is, where they came from. Um, and we'll probably end up with another opening or two during the course of the summer. Okay. That's not uncommon, but... To have everything pretty much ready for the start of school year, I feel like we're I feel like we're ahead of the game at this point right now. Are there other positions throughout the school district that you all hire for that aren't necessarily teaching, like you know maybe cooks or oh, yeah. custodians, or I'm trying to think of you know any number of you know people that would be involved. You know, I think I heard our treasurer say the other day that we sent out about 600 W twos this year of people that, that work for us now um i think we actually have about 360 you know people that work on a, on an everyday basis mm -hmm. between 350 and, and and 400 but yeah we have uh you know we're always looking for people for cooks custodians uh we have a maintenance staff uh clerical you know, building secretaries uh we have uh, a lot of people now more over the last several years of aides who actually work uh maybe in one-on-one -on -one settings with kids that uh, you know think back about your grade school career and your you know your school career and you think about like the people that worked in the lunchroom and the aides and all of those people that were so hands-on with your school career that weren't necessarily teachers but I mean I still to this day remember my aides at Kennison and sure. and all of that and still see some of them and you know, they were a crucial part of our growing up. And, and bus drivers, you know. I mean, oh, oftentimes, oftentimes you have that Dude. same bus driver for 12 years. I'm yes. Not. Unlike, you know, where you have a teacher maybe for a, a year or <laughs> exactly. two. You've got that bus driver for 12 years. I mean, they probably know you better than anybody in, in the whole district. So, yes. Uh, those are all really, all really so important, important positions. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And even you think about the ladies in the office and all of that that you can go to and you know, you don't feel well or something and, you know, they're there for you. So, yeah, I was in a building the other day and a little boy came in and he, and he had big tears in his eyes and he was hurt, he said. And 
I oh. couldn't I couldn't see anything on, wrong with him. And the secretary put a Band-Aid on him, and he was fine. <laughs> I don't know what she put the Band-Aid on, but that was all he needed, and he went right back to class. So. Just things like that that do make a sure. huge difference in a kid's life. So, Okay, and uh, if there are uh, people looking to get involved, how would they find uh, we're always accept- job openings? We're always accepting applications, and uh, we need substitutes for all the positions that we've talked about here. You know, yeah. Obviously, we need substitute teachers. We need uh, people that are willing to substitute as an aide, cooks, custodians. And right now, across the country and Southeast Ohio, everybody's really struggling with uh, bus drivers. So uh, okay. if you're interested in, in doing any of those things, just come to the central office or call. I think we even have an application online on our website online. Awesome. You can fill out that application and uh, and we'll get a hold of you and set up an interview and okay. be glad to work you in. And that's a great way to get your foot in the door for a full-time position. Yeah. Uh, you know, like we talked before, it's kind of an audition for a, a full-time position. So we're always looking to hire people as substitutes. Wonderful. And the other thing last night that we did, uh, you know, our board actually uh, – approved the uh, resignation of uh, our middle school principal, uh, Mr. Mark Burman. I'm sure you know Mark. Mark's been uh, principal to middle school for 18 years. A few years. Yeah, and I will say that, honestly, uh, and I'm probably not the only person that feels this way, but anybody in education will tell you that that might be the toughest job in education is a middle school principal. Oh, man. Because the hormones are flying at that middle level. Middle schoolers are nuts. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and so uh, it's a really, really tough job. And for a guy to be able to do that job, for 18 years is nothing short of miraculous and do it as well as he's done for the last 18 years. So I told the guys in there on, on the radio a while ago that, you know, uh, our school district in this community owes Mark Berman a huge debt of gratitude because that's not an easy job to do. And he, he's moving on. He deserves to have a different job. And I would have probably already lost my mind if I'd have been a middle school principal for 18 <laughs> years. So, um, you know, that job is, is vacant right now and we're looking to fill that position as well. Oh. And see, principals, do you have to have a different certification for that kind of situation? You do. Uh, okay. you, you can, after you've been teaching, you have to have had uh, three years experience in the classroom as a teacher. That makes sense. And then you can get a, a principal's license at okay. that point. It's more coursework also. Um, okay. But you do have to have had three years of classroom teaching experience. Gotcha. And then back to the substitute teacher thing. I know we've talked about that a couple of times. What are, I know they've kind of, they loosened it up. Loosened up. Yeah. yeah, they have loosened that up. And, you know, back during COVID, they started allowing us to <laughs> actually, um, they left a lot of it up to the local districts and how you want to handle it. And our, our board okay. decided to, we allow anyone who's a high school graduate to apply. Now, then that t- comes to me and my staff as to who we actually want to use of those people because okay. you know we'll bring them in and interview them and a lot of times we know people so we've had over the last few years it's really saved us uh, I mean, we've had a lot of kids that are in college that, are, uh, yeah. that get on the sub list and maybe they're only taking classes three days a week or something like that, that but they're sense. they're available to sub on a you know on a tuesday or a friday or whatever yeah. um and it's really expanded our, our pool of candidates for that's uh, awesome substitute teachers so and i thought that might go away once covid kind of went away but the state actually allowed that to re- remain in effect i don't really see them changing it anytime soon because the pool of candidates for people going into education is shrinking and i don't know if it's because you know, you, you just get beat up so much in education as a teacher or principal superintendent whatever and there's not as many people going into it um so they've kind of left it that way so we get a lot of our, our of our people that don't actually have a lot of our substitutes don't actually have a um, teaching degree. Okay. And it used to be that you had to have a bachelor's degree of some sort. It didn't matter what it was in, but you had to have a bachelor's degree to get uh, a substitute teaching license. No more. We can we can hire people that have a high school diploma. And you know, honestly, that's not a bad thing. I mean, I know lots of right. people who don't necessarily have a have a college degree. Oh. Yeah. that are fantastic in the classroom. Yes. And so to not be able to utilize those people is, is I think criminal. it's good that they've just allowed you and your discretion at your Absolutely. discretion. Um, I think I mean, some things good came out of COVID and it was things like this. I know, you know, in the, in the restaurant business, the, some of the liquor laws and stuff that they revamped and changed that we thought would all go back. And they just kind of yeah. were like, nah, it's fine. We'll just, we loosen things a little bit and it's fine. And sometimes they see that, you know, loosening those things actually works better. And uh, Yes. And give, give people a little bit 
more leeway to make decisions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like don't, you don't have to govern everything, but anyway, we digress, but um, no, so that's wonderful. So if you um, are thinking about being a sub, maybe you're retired, maybe you are in college and you could use a little bit of extra money. Uh, that's a great idea. Yeah. And then, you know, I don't know <laughs> because I just came from the radio there and I talked about a lot of these things there. So I'm starting to, in my mind say, did I talk about this with you already? <laughs> but the hall of honor. Yes. No, we have not spoken uh, about that yet. And so last night, uh, our board approved the induction of three new members to the hall of honor. And can it you was, spill the tea? I can, uh, it was, it was fantastic, uh, process and procedure. Uh, we, the new inductees this year will be Bob Kite. Okay. Surprise. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Jill Baldwin, okay. who is actually Bob's sister. So we had a, a brother sister. Oh, interesting. Combo, yeah. And Dr. Uh, Debbie Crabtree. Okay. Now, what's amazing about these three new inductees is that I think between the three of those people, there is roughly about 130 years of service to the Jackson City School District. <laughs> Uh, now, really well deserved. Yeah. Huh? And now Debbie, I think she's actually started her 50th year in education. Wow. And I think all but two of those have been in the Jackson City School District first How couple years. How does she do that when she's only 29? I, I don't know. I don't know. See? That's amazing. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, you know, everyone knows uh, Bob's contribution to the to yep. the district and served as, you know, teacher, principal, um, or assistant principal, coach, athletic, oh, gosh, athletic, everything. athletic director, and just, you know, gave – incredible amount of time uh, to the district and was there for every single thing over the years. And then the one who really kind of flies under the radar is Jill Baldwin. And what people don't know is, you know, Jill retired several years ago, but still continues to show up every day and not as a sub. I can't get her to uh, fill out the paperwork to become a substitute teacher and get paid for it. She just comes and volunteers and works every every single day. And so the wow. committees that, that selected these people in the process this year was we had the most number of nominees that I've seen since I've been here. And so we have, we had a um, nomination committee and that committee of people had to take the total number and reduce it down to 10 candidates. And that was a tough task in itself. And then a a separate and distinct committee came in and had to narrow it down to the three final people. And that was brutal because there were so many, there were so many people that, you could easily make a case for, for, for being on this wall. And a lot of those people will get on. Will I was going to say, do you keep, you know, those in the back burner for we maybe do. another year or. I like to liken it to, you know, the, the baseball hall of fame, you know, okay. people, you know, they get nominated and if they don't get in the first time, you know, they stay on the ballot sure. for X number of years. And eventually I, I guess maybe they, if you don't get in after 10 years or whatever, they take you off. But so all the people who did not make it this time will be back next year they don't have to be renominated or anything we'll open it up for probably a month like we did this year and accept new nominations so awesome. you know the list of candidates will be even longer next year because you're going to have these people that, these people that didn't make it uh, along with any new ones that come in so uh this group was really kind of special to me because uh, you know i'm not from here originally so uh all three of these people um I've worked under me during that time. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, that's true. Like, and so I have, you might not even know. Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, I made it clear to the board back when we started this uh, hall of honor back up that I don't, you don't want Phil Howard determining who's going into the hall of honor. I mean, I don't know everybody in the community here. I mean, I'm, I've been here almost 20 years now and I know a lot of people, but I don't know the history and sure. what, what people have done, you know, for our school district and for our community, like some of our other people here do. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not involved in, I don't vote on it. You know, I'm, I'm there to watch what's happening and make sure that yeah. we follow the board's procedure, but I don't, I don't have a vote in it because you don't want me voting on that because I don't know the history of the people here. But so, uh, it was, is a really good process. Uh, the actual big celebration is going to take place on May 25th. It'll be the day after high school graduation at our, um, annual alumni, alumni yeah. banquet. Yeah. And we, we like to try to do it there because these people deserve to have a big crowd and people there. So we're looking forward to uh, May 25th when we can formally induct these people into the hall of honor. I have a quiz for you. I, I'm, I'm bad at quizzes. Have so you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a superintendent. He sucks at quizzes. Has anyone ever told you, and I guarantee you anyone that went to school around my time, um, Mr. Kite's catchphrase. 
I've heard several of them, so I, I don't know if I can say it on the air or not. But <laughs> yes, you, this one you can. So and and um, so it was funny because we had several teachers throughout our career um, that had fun catchphrases, and so our senior shirt. And we sold, we made a bazillion dollars. I was a, a senior class secretary. We made a bazillion dollars off of selling these shirts. We did the top 10 quotes from teachers at Jackson High School on the back of the shirt. What a and great it was our senior shirt, but it had the top 10 quotes from teachers. And <clears throat> um, Mr. Kite, every Friday when we would leave his history class, would say, if you can't be good, you better be careful. Yeah, I've heard that many times. Yeah. I've heard that many times. Yeah, and, and what uh, a great idea, you know. I mean, uh, I could see where that'd be pretty popular it, amongst it, kids. It's <laughs> always stuck with me, though. Like, okay, it's Friday. If you can't be good, you better did it be say? Careful. Did it say the name of the teacher? The, yes. Oh, okay, I didn't I know if you so, just yep. put the yep. the phrase on there and let people guess who it was. Yes. <laughs> um, see, we had. Um, I'm trying to think of all of them. Um, so, Mrs. Eubanks. Uh, Lucinda, I'm sure you remember yeah. her, uh, used to say the rest of the period is yours. Like yeah, it's you a, have a couple of minutes, sure. do what you need to do. And then Mr. Welch, who I think just retired, yep. maybe Gene Welch. We always laughed because he always said Pacific instead of specific. <laughs> so could, he would say, could you be more Pacific? <laughs> and we always got on him about that. And then uh, Kent Washam, who we just lost recently as well, used to tell stories about he and his friend Thompson. I don't know if he was like his college roommate. Uh, I, I remember. Know. Have I told you about the time that me and my friend Thompson did blah, blah, blah? <laughs> <laughs> it was always so. Those were, But these are all like quotes from teachers. And yeah. So anyway, but Mr. Kite was, if you can't be good, you better be careful. It's always stuck up there with Pretty me. good advice. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty good <laughs> advice, especially for high school juniors or whatever we were back then. I think juniors. Right. So <laughs> he knew us all too well. <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was fun. So now, you know, we had a really cool senior shirt. Yeah. Um, you know, other things that are going on right now, I mean, we kicked off state testing this week. Everybody's excited about state testing, stress, oh, like, whatever kids you want to call it. Everybody loves it. Teachers, yeah. everybody. Yeah. We wish we could do more of it, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, every know. day we wish it could be a state test. And actually today it's ironic that we uh, we were trying to log on in some of our buildings. And so these kids are ready to take the test. The teachers are all amped up and ready to take the test. And we can't get logged on to the state website. So and it's, I, it's not on our, our end. It's not on our end. It's on the state's end. So now, you know, all these kids. Like yeah. So now all these kids, you know, were probably stressed out all night last night, getting ready to take the test today. Teachers didn't sleep any last night because their kids are getting ready to take this test. And oh, no. we can't give the test today. So we're going to have to go. They're going to go through that stress again. You know? What so, does the state say about that? Will it be tomorrow or will I mean, I guess. There's a window when we do the testing, you can pick a, you pick a window of time and you have to get all your testing in during this time, but you give them a specific date that you want to do. Most of the kids that are in school that day. And then if there's a few kids absent, you have to get those kids tested during that next window of whatever it is, a few five, six days or whatever. So okay. we just have, we've had to move the window now uh, because of that, but Oops. it's just, you know, as if things aren't stressful enough for the kids, the parents, the teachers. Right. Then to find out that, oh, we can't get logged on today. And oh, no. when, when I left, when I left to come here, uh, my principals and counselors were on the phone with uh, ODE or DEW or whatever they've changed their, their name to now to figure out. Because at first, you know, we didn't know if maybe it was just a problem on our end. Sure. You know, with, uh, but no, it's it, it's on their end. And from what I understand, it's not just our district. I mean, it's it's, it's it, all the ones. It could trying be to everybody that's it. scheduled their window for today. Oops. So, yeah. So. That was a bummer, but uh, and that state testing runs pretty much from now throughout, you know, the rest of this month and into early into early May, and then we try to get in, um, you know, most of our field trips after that, you know, our, our elementary field trips, you know, they're going to Zoo and Kosai and all these different places, but we try to do that at the end of the year, the last couple of weeks, as much as we can, so that we don't lose instructional time sure. prior to the prior to the testing. Uh, so, uh, our Stedifords, you know, are, of course, are coming up, and you know that's a, a, a 
a long standing tradition here yes, in, in our district. And it took me a while to understand that when I got here. I'm like, what is this all about? You know, yeah. and uh, I could see where you would be like, what on earth? Yeah, because we didn't do that in, in Pike County where I came from. You well, know? and honestly, I just assumed everybody did it. And so you start talking about it like when you get to college or whatever, and people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely oh. unique to, you know, our county and our and our district. It's uh, part of our heritage. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, those are the big things. And in late May, we'll start with our kindergarten screening uh, for next year. Oh, uh, okay. And we'll, we'll usually do that a few days before school's out. And then we'll have maybe one or two more times during the summer in July for, you know, people that have moved here or for whatever reason, people didn't get the message or didn't show up. Gotcha. Um, so we can get all of our kindergarten kids registered at that time so what uh what's involved in kindergarten screening um they, is this like to, to make sure that your child is ready yeah uh, and you know they'll, they'll actually do a little assessment to determine you know okay. how how ready the kid is uh for kindergarten uh, and you'll see you know a broad range of, of of abilities there and sometimes it's not even necessarily that the kid doesn't have the ability to do it it's that you know, they're too shy and backward and you can't get them to do anything. And you see it's all kinds of maturity things yes. also. I mean, there'll be little kids that'll come in and they act like they're 10 years old and they'll yeah. just sit and talk to you like we're talking here. And there'll be some that you can't get to say anything. They don't want to get off their mom's lap. Yeah. I mean, uh, and everywhere in between. And then we'll have, you know, we have kids that, you know, they already know how to count to 100 and they know their colors and they can recognize letters to some kids that, haven't been exposed to anything and you know they don't know any of that stuff so um it, it gives us a barometer of where these kids are at so that we know okay. where to place them and what they need to start the school year is there certain criteria that the children have to meet to be able to to go to kindergarten yes no i mean other than um you know believe it or not we've had we've had a couple of instances where we might have a kid who's not even potty trained and you know you think oh my gosh you know five years old but yeah that's that you know that's kind of happened before so we do expect kids at you know at that age to i would think so you know to be um to be potty trained unless there's some you know right some situation yeah yeah uh, but other than that um no i mean we just need to know where they're at so that we can gauge you know their progress throughout the throughout the course of the year okay very good um one other thing i'd like to talk about do we have time here are we Oh yeah, we have another half hour. You're good. Oh, okay. So um, <laughs> keep on talking. So one of the things that you know that our that our board did a couple of years ago was um, we implemented something that I've seen in a few districts, and we now have a student rep on our on our board of education. Bravo! Such a wonderful idea. And we real it's not just a you know a token position that you know somebody can put on a resume or what. We include these, this kid in almost everything that we do. Now, there are times where we have executive session, you know, <laughs> we're going to be talking yes. specifically about things. We, we don't allow them to participate in that. But uh, I know you've seen us in the restaurant with, you know, a couple of board members when we're having our agenda review. We always have the, the student rep with us. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. So, you know, and that has brought about some change uh, in, in our district and particularly in the high school because that student is the board's ear to the student population you know it makes so much sense why did we not all think of this this earlier but um it's brilliant and we had um, a couple of years ago and we've had we've had really really good student uh, reps a couple of years ago we were able to make some changes to our uh, dress code because of this student rep that was like hey kids don't want to wear this they don't want i mean and so the board listens to that and just like anything else, you don't get everything you want. They they understand that. Sure. Uh, but, you know, no change can come about without someone, you know, stepping up and Listen, saying, hey, we need to change this. You don't get the, the sale unless you ask for it, right? And if something's really bothersome to these kids that you might not even think about, you know, whether it be the length of shorts or whatever, then you, you're going to listen. Right. And there's sometimes that, you know, <laughs> change does need to occur and, and we just don't know it, you know, and, and it's not a big deal in some cases to us as adults, but as you said, to those kids, it, 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 it is. And, you know, that's what we're supposed to be here for. Now, obviously, you know, if they want to do something outlandish, we're not going to allow that. But and I think that our board, our student board reps have had to tell the student body before or kids in the student body. I'm not taking that to them. That's ridiculous. Yeah, like that's, that's crazy. <laughs> so um, 
it's and it's good it's good for those kids to see what we have to deal with and for them to you know be put in that position and because they've told me before you know, like hey they came to me and they wanted us to do this or that and i said we can't i'm not going to ask for that they're going to say no you know i mean that's crazy so it's been a, it's been a really good thing and we're getting ready to uh, open up the applications for next year we usually, usually do that and towards the end of april may okay and those kids who are juniors this year can apply and we will select one of them to represent the student body next year. Can you give an example of something, you know, some change that's been made because it's it's been presented to you by the student rep? The biggest thing is is the student dress code. I mean, we've okay. had you know, we've had we've made major changes to our student dress code because the like being more lenient about oh, it yeah, or yeah. Really? Yeah. What was bothersome to them? Uh, you know, things like uh shorts, uh facial uh facial piercings to some degree, you know, we didn't allow um uh, nose rings and and those kind of things um you know in the grand scheme of things does it does it really matter i mean the policy was old needed to be updated okay um and so this student actually ended up getting a group of kids together and they took a look at our dress code they presented me with what they felt like were the changes that we needed to make with the dress code okay and then i was able to take it to the board and and we made a lot of changes and again i don't know that they got everything that they asked for sure. but they got a lot of they got a lot of changes from that. So okay, yeah, you're not wearing booty shorts. Ain't gonna right. happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you go to college for that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, and I I think that's a perfect example. Awesome. Another thing that we've got coming up that we're pretty excited about is um, we are going to be hosting the Supreme Court of Ohio at Jackson Middle School. You're probably going to see more about it here in the coming days and, and weeks here in the paper. It's going to be April 24th. Not every day that, you know, you get to watch the Supreme Court in action. I mean, they're going to actually be trying cases uh, in, what? Yep, in the Jackson Middle School. And it's a huge undertaking. I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of time that, uh, you know, my high school principal and middle school principals have put into – We've had meetings because there's got to be really strict security. You know, Sheriff Frazier has been involved in that. You know, the, um, we got to make sure that everything is secure. It's uh, it's crazy the amount of security that, that goes into that. But we will host kids from Oak Hill and Wellston. They'll bring, I don't know, probably 100 kids over, maybe kids that are in their um, government classes or whatever. Sure. They get to choose how they, what kids they want to send. And they actually get to see them discuss cases? Yeah, and they're actually... Uh, so cool. Cool. They're actually they actually have attorneys going to the buildings prior to the cases to sit down with the kids that are going to be there to watch to explain certain things about the case. Um, it's it's going to be a, a really really cool event. And like I said, not everybody gets the opportunity to do that, so we're kind of excited about that. It's Amazing. actually going to be don't hold me to this, but from what I understand, I think that it's going to be there's one session of it. There's going to be three sessions. But I think one of the sessions is going to be open to the public if, if the public wants to come in and watch. So it uh, might be something that you want to mark on your calendars for uh, April 24th. Yes. Mm. Very cool. So we're kind of excited uh, about that. Uh, let's see. I think I've pretty much covered what the main things that, that I had on here. And I've got a list here of these are just things that are happening at the high school Hey, it's let's not, do that. This is not even counting, you know, the, <laughs> all the athletic events. I mean, this is just, you know, talking about scholarship night and, um, you know, band concerts, uh, end of the year band concerts and choir concerts and, and yeah. all of those kind of things. There's not a night, I don't think. And, you know, people, it's, it's funny because people will sometimes call me and they'll be like, you know, You've got three things going on tonight. Why couldn't you have scheduled that? Well, there's 300 things and there's 100 nights. So, yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, like I, I, only, I don't know what to tell you. You know, life's about choices. You got to make a choice. You know, and sometimes people get put in a predicament of you know their kids playing a baseball game. One kid's playing a baseball game, but their daughter is singing in a choir concert. And I mean, why we got to do both these on the same night? Well, because there's only so many nights. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes you got to make choices. So. Maybe mom and dad split up that night and somebody goes and watches Susie and somebody goes and watches Billy. I don't, I don't know, but there's nothing we can do about that because there's just so many events that, that we have to be able to, to get in. Absolutely. You know, another thing that, um, that I've always participated in and every, every year, and we just recently had our scholarship selection meetings. And That's exciting. It, it is amazing how much money 
these kids are getting for college scholarships. Uh, we sit there and, and we've got lots and lots of people in the community that sponsor scholarships. And those people get an invitation and they come and, and we go over all the kids that apply for their scholarship. And, um, you know, it's their scholarship. So we pretty much let them decide. But they need sometimes our assistance because they don't know anything about these kids. You know, they just they might know a couple of kids that have sure. applied or their families or something. So they rely on, you know, our principal and counselor to say, you know, what this kid's about, what they're going into, what they're going to college for, what school they're going to, you know, maybe, you know, how much money have they gotten other scholarships? Because a lot of people want to make sure they're giving their scholarship money to someone who really, really needs it and not somebody who's already got a full ride, um, those kind of things. So, yes. But this particular class is, I mean, this is a, this is a fantastic class. I mean, so talented. I mean, about 175 to 180 kids in this graduating wow. class. We have 11 valedictorians. What? <laughs> 11 valedictorians. Jeez. And, you know, that's a, that's a topic that comes up occasionally. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, you know, well, that's crazy. Why don't you just have one? And, and there is a way you can do that. I mean, some places. I've heard that before, yeah. that some places will have a, uh, a graduated uh, um, grading scale. And so, you know, you, you'll hear kids say, well, I had a 4.3. People like us that went to school when like 4.3, four is as high as you can get. It didn't exist. Four is as high as you can get. But there are places that do it that and way. And I didn't have to worry about that anyway. <laughs> well, and so, um, you know, we've, we've talked about that. And honestly, it's been a long time, but... Several years ago, uh, the board asked me about, man, we had like, you know, a dozen valedictorians one year and they're like, you know, are we watering this thing down? You know, uh, should we do something to make it more clear that, you know, there is one valedictorian? And at that time, I was 100 percent against that. And the reason that I was against that is because if you were a valedictorian of the class, you were guaranteed to get lots of scholarship money. Sure. Someplace. So I was telling the board at that time, I'm against that. And here's why, because if we do that, we're taking away money and opportunities from our kids. I don't care if we have 50 valedictorians, you know, if they're all going to get a bunch of money or free rides to good college, why should we want to stop that? You know, yeah. but now I will say that that tide has turned a little bit over the years and maybe it's partly due to schools like us that allow, you know, 10, 11 valedictorians and, you know, the universities and colleges have now said, they won't give anything, not all of them, but a lot of them won't give anything automatically to just a valedictorian. Okay. I think Wright State might still be the only one, or they were a year or two ago, that they were the only school that I know of that the valedictorian automatically got a full ride to go to Wright State. Oh, um, wow. But I don't even know if that exists anymore. So it may be time that, you know, we may need to look at if we want to, you know, change the way our grading scale operates so that we can not have, you know, 11, 12 valedictorians. But, you know, at the end of the day, well, I, I don't know the harm in that. I mean, yeah, maybe graduation lasts 20 minutes longer because these kids all get an opportunity to speak at yeah, graduation. But, but, you know, if a kid's okay. gone to school for 12 or 13 years and we can't sit there for an extra 20 minutes for kids that have got a 4.0, then we probably need to reevaluate, you know. Yeah, what's wrong with uh, us? What's wrong with us, you know. So you know, I, I all still sit don't. there at sporting events, like, you absolutely. know. And that r reminds me, you know, you remember a few years ago, the graduation that we had where the monsoon came. Yes, we actually have a picture. <laughs> Our screensaver on that TV up there is Pete Wilson holding an upside, like an inverted umbrella with his mask on because the wind had broken his umbrella. Well, you know, yeah. I was up at the podium <coughs> when that thing started and, you know, we can't, Gosh. we can't, we can't get everybody in our gym. It's just impossible. So when, when we're practicing for graduation, we assume that we're going to have it outside, but we give every kid, depending upon the size of the class, and I think they usually get around eight to ten tickets. Well, there's a lot of kids that'll have 20 people that'll come to watch them. Well, they've only got eight tickets, so only eight people are getting in. So we want to do everything that we possibly can to hold it outside because otherwise everybody's not getting in. And you might have people coming in from other states. And right. So we started this thing that night and it wasn't even sprinkling. Well, of course, as soon as we got started, <laughs> it started sprinkling and then it cut loose and just it was poured. Crazy. I usually go back. I, I usually introduce all the valedictorians. So I'll introduce a valedictorian. I'll go back and sit down. They read their speech. I get back up, go up, introduce the next one. Well, I didn't go back over to sit down. I stood at the podium because I was afraid that if I went back over and sat down, I didn't want to stop it. 
I mean, it was pouring rain, but I did not want to stop it. And I was afraid to go back over and sit down because I was afraid board members would be like, Phil, we got to stop this. It's pouring rain. And I didn't want to listen to it. So yeah. I thought, if I go back over there, they're going to, maybe somebody's going to want to stop it. And so if I stay up here, they can't do it. So <laughs> I just had my mind made up that unless it started lightning, we were going to get through this thing. Yeah, right. And of course, you know, I took a lot of heat right after that happened. But I think that most people, you know, were like, hey, you know, it's a memory. Yeah. And people still talk about that. You <laughs> yes. Know, that this was the class that graduated in, in the monsoon. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't, and my thought was in, I had a few people that called me, you know, a day or two after, and like, you know, you've lost your mind. Why would you let people sit out in the rain? I'm like, hey, and this one particular lady that called me, um, she's actually kind of a friend of mine. And I'm like, listen, I see you every Friday night sitting out watching a football game. Uh -huh. And I've seen you sit in worse weather than that uh -huh. and watch your son play football. And you can't sit there for a graduation? Right. Well, she had no response to that. And like, you're right. You're right. So, um, But hopefully, you know, it's been, don't hold me to the number on this, but I'm told 25, 26 years that we've been in a, consecutively that we've been able to have it outside oh really yeah. that's awesome yeah. and not have to go inside we always practice inside and outside so that we can make sure that uh, you know we've done it both places because it's completely different if you're inside as oh, far yeah. as where the kids go and how they cross and walk and stuff so um hopefully we get a great day on that day and fingers crossed i start i start looking at the weather forecast like two weeks ahead of time which you know they can't predict it from one day to the next let alone yeah. Or one alone, hour. Yeah, let alone two weeks ahead of time. But I do try to look ahead of time and see, man, are we going to have good weather on graduation night? Because I don't want to have another monsoon. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you, you talk about that. You talk about, like, just memories, from, you know, the things that happened to you. And honestly, at the time, you're like, oh, my gosh. But then, like, later on, it's hilarious to talk about. I don't know if I've told you this or not, but the, we had our graduation outside a few years ago. And... Our speaker, and I have no idea who he was, I don't know, whatever, he released these doves and was like, go out into the world. And the doves just went up on the the line, the electric line that was sitting over the bleachers and set, and they doo-dooed on everybody's heads. Oh, wow. That would be a memory. <laughs> That's what I remember of my graduation. <laughs> like, literally, that's all I remember about it. <laughs> So, you know, it's just funny, though. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. We, I mean, I didn't get doo-dooed on, so I didn't care. But We don't we don't normally have a guest come in and speak at graduation. I've talked to almost every class about that. And even myself, I, I don't give a, a lengthy speech at yeah. graduation. I always joke with the kids when we're practicing up there, and I, and I always say, listen, guys, do you guys want me to give a speech? And they're like, no, no. And I'm like, because if you do, I, you know, I have one about doors closing and windows opening and yeah, I, I can all, give all you, I can give you that speech. No, no, they don't want, they don't want to hear it. You know? So, um, I haven't given a speech at graduation. <laughs> well, luckily you haven't released any doves either. Right. Right. So yeah, we'll, we'll hold you to that. Sure. <laughs> uh, the other thing that, you know, talking about this, a student rep on our board of education yeah. at that same time our board implemented this thing and it's really turned out to be a pretty cool thing we they have what they call board member shout outs and you know we ha everybody knows the kids in the district and particularly high school kids that, you know, that are the great athletes and the kids that are the scholars and the, you know um sure. but there are tons of kids throughout our district that are doing great things that go unnoticed and, okay. and they don't get a lot of publicity. So we have five board members, obviously. Each board member is assigned a building. And at each board meeting, they will shout out a particular kid. And what they do is the principal gets with the board member, gives them, you know, a script of, okay, um, Phil or Jennifer is my student that I want shouted out, you know, and they'll have a little script of what you've done. Last Aww. night, well, last night we had a little preschool kid from one building. We had a, like a first or second grader, a little girl about this cutest thing ever come up and, and, uh, they talk about the kid, they get a free blizzard at, uh, at Dairy yes. Queen, you know, mom and dad get to come and watch their kid be recognized in front of the board. And it's, it's honestly the, the best part of a board meeting anymore. And board members love that part because when that's over, then we go into the official business of the board. And, you know, most of the people get up and actually leave the meeting at that point. Yeah. So it, it's really been a cool thing. What a that, great that, idea. That they've done because these are kids that, um, you know, like I said, they may not be the, you know, the, 
the all-star athlete. They may not be the valedictorians, the 4.0, but they're those kids that are in the middle that often, you know, go unnoticed and, and, yeah, and don't get that, don't get that resi- uh, recognition. It may be a kid who has, um, you know, maybe struggled last year or early in the year and all of a sudden has turned the corner and they're doing great. And so we want to recognize that kid for that. Sure. Um, so it's, uh, that's been a really good thing that, that we've done here lately too. How fun. And if you get free ice cream, yeah, even better. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, cool. Um, so let's see, speaking of sports and that's not, I wasn't trying to downplay sports, uh, earlier, but, um, so we're into what baseball season, uh, softball, what are, what are other uh, spring sports? Track. track. Yeah. yeah. Baseball, softball, track, uh, boys and girls track. So, and tennis. Uh, you know, we oh, have tennis, tennis okay. at, at this point in the season. So, um, you know, the weather's not being real cooperative. Yeah. But, you know, it's Ohio, and we know that, you know, in April you schedule probably – our coaches probably schedule a game every day. And I always think it's funny. I look down the schedule, I'm like, man, you got 27 games or however many you're allowed to have scheduled, and you're – you're going to be lucky to get to play 15 of them, you know. So right. I guess that's probably the best philosophy to do it is I'll just schedule a game every day and hope that, you know, we get some of them in. Because if you don't, then you have a beautiful day and you're like, man, I don't have a game today, you know. Right. We could but have I had, done something I had one today. yesterday and it rained and I got one tomorrow and it's going yeah. to rain. So we just schedule a game every day and try to play as many of them as we, as we can, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. And I know that the, um, you know, we have had such great success with, um, you know, uh, not to leave anybody out, but the cheerleaders did very, very well uh, there at the national con- uh, competition. I know the baseball team just went down to Myrtle Beach and had, um, you know, some some play down there. And, you know, it's really cool that I, I just don't remember having the opportunities that kids have today to do all of this cool stuff. I ju- I'm glad you brought that up because I just said this to somebody yesterday. I was looking at our board agenda last night and we approved for kids to go to um, you know, we got kids that go to Disney for band. We got choirs that go to New York City. Uh, last night, we proved kids for, to go for the Business Professionals of America to Chicago, Illinois. Um, and I'm sitting there thinking the same thing. I'm like, man, you know, of course, I'm just a, a kid from Latham, Ohio, you know. And we never even hardly went to Columbus. And most of the kids out there didn't know where Columbus was. Right. You know? But the opportunities that, that these kids have now are are really, really incredible. And, awesome. And one thing that, you know, and not just this current board that we have, but all the boards since I've, since I've been here, and I've worked with a lot of different people on boards of education over the years, but I really believe that, you know, they've all been about making opportunities for kids. You know, we have started here just in the last several years. We started a boys and girls bowling team. Uh, Which – so cool yeah and we've had kids that have gone on to college and got college scholarships because of that uh we've started that was the next one esports somebody's like what kids play i know they play video games and you wouldn't believe there's all kinds of scholarship opportunities out there or dylan got a a full ride to rio absolutely you know doing that and it's it's a huge deal and so you know we we've started that we just started this uh bass fishing again so cool I would have done that. That would have been awesome. And so when, when you look around at, at these at these kids that are that are in these some of these different sports that we've just started, oftentimes they're not, you know, your your all American football player, your all American basketball player, whatever. But it's opportunities for kids who they don't want to play basketball, they wanna play football, but they wanna do some of these other sports. Yeah. And as long as we can give these kids those opportunities and we're finding out that, you know, they're going off and getting scholarships, cheerleading. We've had a couple of girls in the last couple of years that got cheerleading scholarships. Yeah, I know, like and, Caitlin Webb, and I know she's cheering down at. Um, and I think there's uh, an Osborne, Virginia Tech. Osborne girl, and yeah. I'm probably going to leave somebody out. I apologize in advance, but Kendall's down in South Carolina yep. cheering. So um, cool. Yeah, it's just opportunities that you know didn't exist, you know, back back when we were in school. Absolutely, and you know, and I think I can't remember. You know, I look back now at at the kids I graduated with and whatever, and maybe they did. I don't remember it. But the amount of kids that we have going to Ivy League schools from our communities, I mean, not necessarily just Jackson, but all over the place. I mean, the sky's the limit for our kids. And just because we live down here in Appalachian, Southern Ohio, um, 
these kids are are doing it. And I think that is so awesome. It is. And, you know, this year is every year we always, these kids always amaze me as to where they're getting accepted and, and going to school. We but got two again, kids. I didn't think that was even a thing. Like, I didn't even know that it was a possibility when we were in school. You know, we've got... Yeah, for me, when I graduated, I mean, I knew I was either going to go to Rye Grand or OUC. You know, I mean, that was it. I thought that was all there was, really. Uh, Now we've got got two kids in this year's graduating class that have uh, been accepted at Yale. Yes. Uh, We have a kid who has got an appointment at uh, West Point. Uh-huh. You know, those things just didn't happen, you know. So it's it's a really, really strong class. And, I, and there are just so many opportunities for young kids out there. It used to be that if you didn't go to college, um, and, and I think we've changed that stigma some over, over the years. If you didn't go to college, you were almost considered, you know, a failure to some degree. Well, sure. now, Buckeye Hills, oh. the things they're doing down there are amazing. Jamie Nash has done a fantastic the, job down the there. The king of, yeah, that I, is awesome. I mean, we've got kids going down there. I think we have about 120 kids down there, and that's two grades, junior and senior. So about 60 kids out of the class, out of the class of 175 or 180, mm-hmm. a third of them are going to Buckeye Hills. And they're getting... Um, credentials and things like welding lineman school is a huge thing uh, down there now hvac uh, and these kids are literally graduating and from high school and going out and getting jobs that pay sixty seventy thousand dollars a year yes and so masonry program yes i mean it's it's really unbelievable that the opportunities that that kids have well and i'm so thankful to buckeye hills and i mentioned this um i think uh with one of the superintendents the other day uh that was then um that one of our full-time kitchen uh, staff members is graduating from Buckeye Hills from high school, and he's already working full-time. He's worked for us since he was 15 years old, gone through the culinary program there. They've enabled him to do kind of a work-study thing where, you know, he can work hours while he's in school, and he's now full-time and graduating and, you know, has this full-time job at our place. Well, we've hired. It's amazing. We've hired a bus mechanic, uh, a student that's at Buckeye Hills right now. hasn't graduated yet. Yeah, he's met all the requirements for graduation, but he's job. He was eligible for job placement. That's how. So we've hired this kid. He's a full time employee of Jackson City Schools, and he's going to graduate in a month or two. You know, but he's already got already already got a full time job as a bus mechanic for us. So. Yeah, there's a lot of great uh, opportunities out there for kids. It is just so cool. And if you just go through the program and and whatever, and, you know, I think (laughs) that you would probably agree that when we were in school, you know, if you went to a trade school or whatever, it was kind of frowned upon. There's no question. And, you know, those kids were probably made fun of quite a bit. And, I mean, if I had to do it all over again, I'd probably do something like that. Absolutely. Because graduate high school with a full-time job. And, and instead of going on to college in some cases and accruing $150,000 worth of debt. You know, right. So, so, I mean, it's not for everyone, for certain. But, but it's an option. It's an option for kids. Yes. That don't want to go to college and spend four years and, and possibly end up in a bunch of debt. So Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can graduate, you know, as a as a nurse. You can graduate, you know, as um the, I can't, cosmetology. I mean, there's all, any number of things that you can do. Yeah. So cool. So, yeah, that's always an option if you're listening out there today. And they have adult programs, too, just to let you know. Yes. But, uh, We've had some high school kids actually go down and take advantage of the um, evening programs. Yeah. Super cool. And then, um, yeah, so there's all kind of opportunities for these kids that, I guess, I wouldn't say that I don't know that we didn't have them. We just didn't know about them. Possibly, yeah. Or we didn't do a very good job of making sure that, that kids knew they were out there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, very cool. Well, we have a minute or so left. Uh, what else would you like to tell our viewers while you're here? I, I think we've pretty much covered everything. I mean, like I said, this year's flying by. I mean, they all seem to fly by. They get quicker and, and quicker. And so um, we got one more board meeting. You know, I was telling a board member last night, can you believe that, you know, this was before the board meeting, that we only have two be- two meetings before graduation, and now we only we only have one. So, I mean, it's on us. I mean, this year is is – almost uh, in the books at this point so that's right and then it's going to be time for you to go lay by your pool all summer right uh, I don't know about that that's an inside <laughs> joke I always tease them I'm like yeah oh, it's about time for graduation you get to go home and lay by the pool all summer yeah, people long people always say you don't work do you during the summer what do you guys do in the summer like <laughs> It's a busier time almost uh, than now, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, you've got to figure out what the heck you're going to do the next year, right? Yeah, that's right. All in a, all in a month or so. But, uh, well, very good. Um, I guess the only other question I would be, uh, you know, buildings, they all in good shape. You know, how, how are we doing with, with that? Uh, I know I still think of the high school as being new, but it's not necessarily all new at this point. Yeah, we, we have a, um, a paving project we'll, almost every year we're, okay. we're going in a cycle. Um, actually this year I, I, we're paving, we're going to pave our bus garage. We've got a okay. lot of big holes down there and it needs to be done. And then we're, I think we're probably going to seal the parking lots at all the elementary buildings uh, because that asphalt's still in good shape. It just needs to be sealed. So those kind of things we'll take care of uh, this summer. That and done. still working on that uh, small project there at the, at the middle school field, football field, we're trying to build that. Concession yeah, I'm glad, stand I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, we plan to tear down that concession stand. And if anybody's been there to a middle school, <laughs> was there when i was there well, to, and it's more about the the restroom yes access you know i mean we've had porta potties set up behind the bleachers there and it's just not, not good. Cool. i mean you know they get full i don't care how often you, i mean i told i told our ad and our um and our maintenance guy I said i better not get a call again on a sunday that tells me that the porta potties are full you know well it's hard you know, to know, I mean, we have them come out a couple of days a week and pump the things. But if you have an ab, you know, a huge crowd on a Thursday night and they just got cleaned out, you know, uh, need so to know about that. you know, in this day and age, you really, I hope that we've progressed progressed beyond the point of where we have to have porta potties set I up at, an, at a venue like that where you have tons of people in there. I mean, there's probably literally more people that attend events at that middle school when you consider all the Pee Wee uh, events that go there yes. you know, with the. Pee Wee football. There's probably more people that attend events there than at Alumni Stadium, I would venture to say, or it's close. I'd say you're right. So, you know, it's time that we move on from that. I think I saw on the floor in there, no hold me to the date, but someone had written in the concrete before it dried, 1950 something. I mean, that building has been standing there for 75 years. I know it was there when I was there. Pete Wilson said it was there when he was there. So, uh, you know, it's been there a long time. So to get that thing knocked down and get a modern building there with restroom facilities is, is pretty high on our, on our list of priorities. It just seems point. like a no brainer, yeah. right? but you know, people don't realize that, you know, there's all kind of red tape that you got to jump through with getting permits from oh, the state. The state and, is so much yeah. fun to work so, with. So, you know, we're in the process of that. And I think that, uh, I think we're getting close sure to you should see that thing torn down here before long and something new going up there very good i just wanted to bring that up as well so well thank you uh, of course jackson city school superintendent phil howard uh for spending the morning with us i know you're a very very busy man and uh <laughs> trying to deal with these state tests debacle today is sure. probably not uh is, this is not high on your agenda but you showed up anyway and we greatly appreciate that well, it's always a, always a pleasure jennifer of course well, we love having you here as well. So, all right. Well, we will be back here tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.